All right, so this is the 2020 Razorblade Stealth. And in many ways, I would consider this to be my favorite laptop on the market right now. Not just like gaming laptop, but just favorite laptop, period, because they do so much right. But because it is such a good product, it's also this wonderful example of what is wrong with Intel-based devices right now. This is like the epitome or like the poster boy of, you know, it, it's so good, but Intel. So the way I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna do like a quick review of it, and then I wanna talk about some bigger picture stuff, like the, the landscape of laptops right now. So the first thing I wanna draw attention to on this device is the, I guess, design and material choices and aesthetics of it. It is this unibody built device that just, it's just got this wicked look to it. I love it. I've always enjoyed the way that the Stealth look. I've always enjoyed Razer's build quality, but this one in particular, like the 13 inch Stealth, it's this, the moment you pick it up, it's got this great balance to it. It's perfectly balanced, like like all things should be. It's perfectly balanced in this in this weird way. Maybe it's like the, the dimensions of it or the, I don't know. I'm always drawn to it and it's hard to portray this in a video, right? Because you guys are just looking at it, you're not holding it. But when you pick up something like the G14 from Asus, this is a very popular device, also a great machine but this just doesn't feel the same. You pick up, if you had these in front of you, you pick them up, like you just know that this is a, it's just, it's got that vibe to it that most people will appreciate. Uh, it's got this nice black, like matte black finish to it with that logo, like that snake logo that's not super obnoxious. It's got this, you know, two-tone finish to it. I like it. Okay, this machine is super expensive because of that design aesthetic though, right? They can charge this kind of money because not a lot of laptops are made like this and they know they have something that's relatively unique. Now the performance this year has been improved a good amount. The CPU wattage has been bumped up to 25 watts so it can just hold the turbo boost a little bit better and the GPU has been upgraded to the 1650 Ti Max-Q. So it's like a noticeable difference between this year's model and the previous year's model in terms of just the internal components. The fan noise can get somewhat loud if you push it, but it's to be expected. It's a laptop that pushes out respectable performance. Uh, the screen this year has also been upgraded to a 120 hertz display. I don't even know why I'm showing you this. Like you can't see the hertz here, but uh, it's a faster screen. One of the complaints I had about the previous model was that it was a 60 hertz screen, right? And if you're playing games, faster refresh is always something that you look for. But I've also noticed that the response time on the screen isn't great. It's not as slow as the G14. Like that's a, it feels like a 35 millisecond screen. This feels, I wanna say like 20, 25 millisecond. I don't have an oscilloscope to test, but this is not like a five or three millisecond screen. It's fast in terms of refresh rate, but you may notice some ghosting in certain games. Like if you play competitive shooters, you may notice some ghosting on your targeting reticle. So it depends on the type of game you play and basically how sensitive you are to this type of stuff. But one thing's for sure, 120 hertz is a heck of a lot better than 60 hertz when it comes to games in general. Okay, uh, the keyboard has also been updated. They fixed the right shift key. This is a keyboard that I am partial to. I've spent a lot of the past few years typing on Razer's keyboards, like their laptop keyboards. So I really like this layout and I think most people will. The arrow key cluster is a little bit different. Like the up and down arrows are really small. So you have to get used to it if you're someone that uses arrow keys for whatever reason. Uh, the trackpad, I've always liked their trackpads. They just do it right. The keyboard lighting is decent. It's not like the most vibrant or brightest keyboard lighting out there. And it also has to be one color. Like you can't choose, you know, individually lit keys. It's gotta be one color across the whole keyboard, but it gets the job done. And I actually like uh, how they've done it in their software. The speakers on the left and right, they're above average. Like they sound actually pretty good. Okay. Oh, ports. Before we wrap this up, there's two USB-A, two USB-C. The one on the right supports Thunderbolt 3, and there's a headphone jack on the left. You see how easy I can spin this thing around? Balance. Okay. So inside, you have the same stuff as the previous years. You get one SSD that you can replace, one Wi-Fi card that you can replace. Of course there's only one Wi-Fi. Why would there be two Wi-Fi's? Uh, the one Wi-Fi card that you can replace and you get 16 gigs of RAM that is baked on. So you can't ever change that or upgrade that in the future. The battery is the same size as the previous years and I got six and a half hours on this machine. I was expecting a little bit more because last year I got seven and a half or something, a little bit less than seven and a half. Uh, six and a half, ran that test twice. So I don't know, maybe it's the video card. I can't tell you. Maybe, maybe it's Windows to be completely honest. 
USB-C charging. It's 100 watts, same thing as last year. Good stuff. Now, let's talk about the not so good stuff. Okay, how should I do this? All right, I think, as I said in the earlier part of the video, I think this is like the perfect example of what is wrong with Intel-based devices right now, because this is such a good machine. And if AMD didn't exist, if Ryzen's chips didn't exist on the market, this would be a fantastic laptop. Expensive, but fantastic. So this thing goes for 1800 bucks, I believe. Yeah, $1,800 for the model with the, uh, the GTX 1650 Ti, which is a lot of money. Now, because it's Razer and because this is such a unique product, like, like, there's nothing else like this. What else is out there that is a unibodied Ultrabook with this type of gaming performance? It just doesn't exist. So they can charge whatever they want, as expensive as they want it to be. However, there is a very similar product, the G14. Now this machine came out, I don't know, two, three months ago. And it is similar in size. Clearly it's bigger, right? It's not exactly the same size, but it's, it's, a, it's a comparable machine in terms of what they're going for. These are both small, portable gaming devices. This machine, I believe, costs 1500 for an eight core CPU with an RTX 2060 versus the $1,800 Stealth with its four core CPU and its weaker GPU. And I get it, they're completely different classes of machine, right? The Stealth is thinner, smaller, lighter, and it's better built than the G14, but you can't help but compare the two because they're both going for that same like portable gaming setup. Okay, the reason why I called this the Stealth, like the poster boy of what's wrong with Intel stuff right now, is because on a small Ultrabook like this, that is as well built and as perfectly like engineered as it is, aside from its CPU, the the problem with the CPU just, it sticks out. It sticks out really hard as being its weakest point because if this thing had an AMD chip in it, I would be recommending this thing like crazy. This would be like, hey guys, go get this right now. It's a little bit more expensive than the other stuff out there, but it is so good. But I'm not, I can't, right? Because it's, it's not AMD. And that has always been the problem with AMD's chips this year, as good as they are. It's like everybody loves AMD's rides and stuff. It's awesome, but no one seems to be using it other than the G14. Everyone else is just sticking with Intel and it's a shame. It's like you see this stuff and you want it to be awesome because it is awesome, but it doesn't have AMD in it. Okay, so there you have it. Do I recommend this device? Kind of. If you don't care about multi-core performance and you just want a very portable gaming device, it's pretty good. It's expensive, but it's pretty good. It's just, this would be a very, very different conversation if it was packing some AMD in it. All right, Razer, you gotta open the doors to AMD, right? Right. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.